what you will see is the results of what happens to people who have abusive experiences in childhood or grow up in dysfunctional households and never have access to any sort of treatment. This is the largest study of its type that's ever been done to examine the health and social effects of adverse childhood experiences over the course of a lifetime. Essentially, we're asking, how do you get from here to here, from a newborn infant with total potential to the man who is broken biomedically, psychologically, and socially, who's got the cardboard sign on his, sec on his neck at the, at the corner? We looked at several categories of childhood abuse and neglect and several categories of household dysfunction. And we picked these really empirically because as we spoke with people in more and more depth in the WAIT program, the categories that we studied kept turning up more and more frequently. The study is simple in concept. It has a retrospective and a prospective component. We are meeting people here and asking them about what happened here on average a half century earlier. The average age participant is 57 years old. The population was 80% white, 10% black, 10% Asian. 50 and one half percent female, 49 and one half percent male. 74 percent had been to college, 46 percent had graduated from college. In no way could you dismiss this as a marginalized population. I'll give you a summary of what we found and then spend the rest of the time providing you evidence for why this is true. What we found is that the things that we termed adverse childhood experiences and, and that I will define momentarily are remarkably common. What is uncommon is their recognition or their acknowledgement. They are well concealed by time, by shame, by secrecy, and by social taboo. They turn out to be strong predictors of what happens later in life in terms of health risks, in terms of disease, and as you will see in terms of premature mortality. And that combination of their high prevalence and their great power makes this statement not an overblown one, makes adverse childhood experiences the leading determinant of what happens to the health and social well-being of a nation's population. Okay, we looked at three categories of abuse. If you read the original article and see the questions that we used, you will realize that we are talking about the rather heavy end of things. For the moment, take my word for it until you look at the article. This man's a three-pack-a-day smoker. He is also a, I would describe him as a semi-pro saloon fighter. He earns, a, he earns a very good living. He earns a very good living as a high-voltage electrician on major construction projects. I uh, spent uh, 225 years drowning out some uh, Poor childhood experiences with drugs, alcohol, cigarettes. Got rid of the drugs, got rid of the alcohol. Next thing I got to get rid of is the cigarettes. And uh, I had no idea that the nicotine played such an important part in keeping that door closed. In keeping the door closed too? The memories that I've blocked out with all these years with the alcohol and the drugs. This interesting woman once took herself from 420 to 280 pounds by buying the Dr. Atkins diet book and following the directions in it. At that point, her husband made to her the comment, 
Guess I'll have to get me a new fat woman now. But as far as being molested, that's stuck with me all my life. You know, it's still in the back of my mind. Um, I am in therapy. Um, I too suffer from depression. Um, yeah, the most traumatic was my mother, losing my mother, most definitely. Which had the most to do with your putting on so much weight? <sighs> That's a hard question. I think I started getting heavier and heavier after my father and mother divorced. But then I, I started really getting heavy after the molestation. And I would try to take it off and then I would just gain it all back and then some. Gain it all back and then some. And most people blow this off as, you know, an unfortunate accident. Well, as is often the case, things that we conveniently describe as accidents are not accidental. And what you see here is that as the ACE score goes up, the likelihood of unintended pregnancy and its treatment, elective abortion, goes up. So sort of a running subtotal now, if you compare, now we'll use a score zero to a score five or more, multiple sexual partners at the level we're talking about increases 5.8 fold, 580%. Three or more marriages, 3.8 fold or 380%. Unwanted pregnancy leading to abortion goes up 290%. So comparing an A score of zero to one of five or more, the likelihood of being involved in intimate partner violence, domestic violence, spouse beating, whatever you want to call it, goes up over 500%. The likelihood of being raped goes up almost 900%. We did not, no. And looking at population attributable risk, it appears that you can account for about half of all depression leading to suicide attempts. You can lay that onto ch adverse childhood experiences. Being raped, almost two thirds. Being involved in domestic violence, about half. Sort of a running subtotal again, A score is zero compared to A score of five or more. Self acknowledged alcoholism over five fold. Intravenous drug use over nine fold. Self acknowledged suicide attempts essentially 17 fold. And when we look at what part of the problem in populations, might be attributed to the category of adverse childhood experiences. About two-thirds of alcoholism, about half of all drug abuse or use, and about three-fourths of intravenous drug use. And so we ended up in deep water where we never anticipated being. I mean, we started out trying to figure out why people we're fleeing the weight program and destroying our reputation of being successful. But in fact, the things that I've been showing you are the risk factors that underlie the 10 most common causes of death in the United States. With an A score of zero, you have a very medically uninteresting population non-obese, non-smoking, non-alcoholic, non-diabetic, non-hypertensive, etc. I mean, no, no internist has a chance of making a living with that group. <laughs> but with an A score of four or more, I mean, this is big medicine. But the things that we call risk factors are effective coping devices. This is an important idea. Because another way of saying it is, many of the things termed public health problems are in fact
personal solutions. They are personal solutions to problems that are well hidden by time, by shame, by secrecy, by social taboo. Back to the old public health problem, personal solution. A pretty heavy-handed statement. I, I feel very comfortable making it. I mean, essentially, this is what psychoanalysts have been saying for a hundred years. But they have been saying it, you know, based on two cases or four, and we're saying it based on 18,000. One way of describing what we've been talking about would be this way. You have this large base of individuals with adverse childhood experiences. Most of them are going to be impaired as a result in some way, maybe socially, maybe emotionally, maybe cognitively. I mean, this is, this is not the way to get a scholarship to BYU or Stanford or wherever. By the time they become adolescents and have some freedom, they ordinarily will try to do something to feel better, and hence initiate what we term health risk behaviors, which might equally properly be called self-help behaviors. Those over time will produce disease and disability in many of them, and a significant portion of them will die early. You have a copy of this pyramid in your handout folder. Alice Miller is a Swiss psychoanalyst who has written a, a remarkable number of interesting monographs on various aspects of this. If you're not familiar with her, look up her name on the Amazon website. Um, the truth about childhood is stored up in our bodies and lives in the depths of our souls. Our intellect can be deceived our feelings can be numbed and manipulated, our perceptions can be shamed and confused, or our bodies tricked with medication, but our soul never forgets. And because we are one, one whole soul in one body, someday our body will present its bill. She, of course, is talking present its bill metaphorically, but in the prospective arm of the study, we are also looking at it literally. The cost of this is truly enormous. Another line from T.S. Eliot, home is where one starts from. As we grow older, the world becomes stranger, the patterns more complicated of dead and living. In my end is my beginning. Whoever would have thought that pediatrics is the breeding ground for internal medicine?